Masked people in the woods. This is around 2017, in spring or fall. I was 19 at the time, and I live in Germany. Me and my friends used to hang out at a friend's basement, smoke the good stuff, and play video games, or watch movies until late at night. My best friend at the time lived just a couple houses down the street from where I lived, and usually it was the two of us riding our bikes back home. There were two rounds we used to get home, one through the city, or the other significantly shorter one through a small forest, maybe one kilometer long. It was a completely dark but proper forest road. That route had a 90 degree turn to cross some rails and a major unlit highway via a bridge. We only took that route when we were equipped with lights and in a group of at least two people because there were a lot of boars, and you don't want to be on your own in case something happens. So one night, we set out to ride home, both quite stoned, and maybe a couple of beers in, but not dead drunk. As we get close to that 90 degree turn where the road leads to the bridge, my friend who was riding in the front suddenly breaks because there was a relatively large tree lying across the road. We both took our bikes and lifted them over the tree and continued. Maybe 10 to 20 meters later, we suddenly spot a fire on the side, right at the junction where we had to make our turn. Looked like a small campfire. We both got a little slower as we saw the fire. And then, as we were getting closer, we spotted like six or seven people around the fire, forming a semicircle all facing towards us. All of them were wearing long white dresses or gowns with masks. Not like KKK with masks, but rather like a sailor's hat with veils. A couple of seconds went by. We were just staring at them. And I guess they were staring back at us. And then one of them moved towards us. We started to sprint away towards the bridge on our bikes. We didn't stop until we were on a well-lit road again. It's been one of the craziest stories among me and my friends ever since. But to the roped, masked people, let's not meet again. The man that stopped me from being kidnapped. My mother was stationed at Kadena Air Force Base around the late 2010s. And being a military child at the age of 12, my life had reset once again. I didn't have friends again, and I had to learn an entire new neighborhood. I didn't really have anything that made me ecstatic. That is except for the Pokemon League held on the base. It was run by a few people who earned their judge cards from Nintendo, and held tournaments and just open game nights. It was really fun picking up the card game, playing the video game, and they even had a small gym and Elite Forge system. I made a lot of friends, and one of them was one of the judges, who I am thankful for to this day. Because if it wasn't for him, I may not be here right now. The judge in question, who we will call Professor Getsu for the sake of anonymity, was a nice dude, who was the youngest of the three and wore a white Professor getup. He looked maybe on the edge of his teens, early twenties, with dark hair and glasses, and a skinny frame. He was extremely helpful to newcomers, sort of like a big brother we could all look up to and strive to beat in our children's cards game and video games. Even if his game name was Getsu, it was a bit nerdy even for me. He was always one of the last people to leave, helping to clean up, and he supposedly lived nearby. It was a bit of a colder night when the event ended. I was sitting outside in the parking lot, scrolling through memes my friends texted me as I waited for my parents to arrive to pick me up. I was just kind of zoning out as the time clicked by when I heard someone nearby. Hey girly, you play Pokemon? I would look up at some really big dude, kind of chubby looking. I saw him every now and then in the events, and he didn't really stand out too much. 
I give him a small nod, said, Yeah, I do. As he gives this wide smile. Like, creepy wide. He starts walking forward, and I'm hit with this nasty stench. Like, bad body odor. I blink a bit as I see he's walking from a black sedan with its back door open. I got this cool card collection. Come here, let me show you. Now my parents have always taught me stranger danger, but my kid brain thought, hey, he went to events and I saw him, so we should be fine. At least so I thought. Until he grabbed my wrist and started to drag me to the sedan. To say I immediately started screaming is an understatement. Stinky didn't care though. He was still dragging me, saying how I will have fun, and throwing out things about trading cards like someone listening would think that he was dealing with a whiny kid. I honestly thought that I was going to be taken, and I would never see my mom and dad again. That I would be on the back of a milk carton and never seen again. Silly, I know, but I was rather sheltered about stuff like dying and death at that time. Thankfully, Professor Getsu had walked out at that very moment, presumably on his way to walk home. All I know is I hear the sound of fabric hitting this dude's face as Professor had swung his professor coat right into the dude's face. I feel his hand go to where the dude's grabbing my arm, and I see his hand grab Stinky's pinky finger and yank back. A heart. Stinky let go and howled like an animal. His professor pushed me back behind him as he yanked his coat off the dude. He then kicked at the back of the dude's knees as he caused him to buckle as Professor grabbed his wrists and pulled back on them. Stinky groaned in even more pain as Professor looked at him. Just a cold look in his eyes. The big brother figure was gone. Something else in its place. I think I was a bit scared of it. Professor's tone of voice when he spoke didn't help either, like icy daggers lingered with his words against Stinky. If I see you back here or doing this shit to my charges, this will pale in comparison to what Japanese prisons will do to you. Stinky would scramble away and get into his car and peel out of the parking lot, Professor glaring at him till he was out of sight would then guide me inside of the venue, buy me some fish and chips and sit down with me until my parents arrived. That cold persona he had when he kicked that dude was gone. Back to being the big brother I knew. To be frank, that frightened me. I didn't quite understand why the teenager was so aggro. I only learned later that Professor Getsu was a black belt who taught kids how to defend themselves with his mother at the local activity center. I suspect he had something of a protective persona, or something in his own life led him to act in as much of a way. He explained the situation to my folks when they arrived. I wasn't allowed to go to the events and leaks as much as I used to, but I did still from time to time. Professor Gatsu was still his normal self at the events and helping people, but he would stop coming to the events a year afterwards his license having expired, and his father moving out of the country soon. Reaching about the same age as he was, and with a little sibling on my own, I sympathize with how, for a brief moment, he became something terrifying, just to make sure I was safe. Oh, and as for Stinky? He never showed up to the events, and he was either banned, or just scared of Professor Getsu. I wish the professor a good life, and I hope he's doing well. As for Stinky, I wish that we never, ever meet again. Late Night Visitors This story happened to me back when I still lived at my parents' house. I was commuting to college at the time, and had three siblings that also lived at home. My brother and two sisters. For some context, we lived on five acres in rural Ohio, 
surrounded on both sides by woods and farm fields. Additionally, during the week, my dad normally left for work at 2 a.m., so I'd always felt like it's my job to be the man of the house, because he was gone during the times when you would imagine something sketchy happening. However, on this night, because it was the weekend, my dad was home. I woke up to the sound of my brother's voice, trying to get my attention. We had separate rooms upstairs, and coming out of our rooms you could look down over the banister and see to our front door. When I woke up, it took me a few moments to get out of the haze and realize what was going on. I looked at the clock, and it was around 2.30 a.m. My brother told me there were two men at our front door. Now this really woke me up. We quietly walked out of my room and peeked over to look down at the front door. When we looked, there was no one at the door, but I noticed my parents off to the side, out of the view of the glass of the front door. I whispered down to my dad, and he told me there were two guys who had been talking to each other and knocking on the door. Hearing my dad say this freaked me out even more. I went back into my room and grabbed my pistol, quickly shuffling down the stairs after looking to make sure they weren't at the door. If they had been, they would have easily seen me coming down the stairs, as it is in direct view of the door. My brother is right behind me as we head over to where my parents are, whispering to try and find out what's going on. My parents had awoken to the sound of our dog barking and had come out to find these two men knocking loudly on the door. At this point, the men return and begin knocking again. Despite the fact that no one had come to the door and our dog was still actively barking, the fact that they were still there at this time, in a location where houses are spread out hundreds of yards, and still knocking with a dog barking, made the situation even more terrifying. After a couple of minutes, the men walked away, and we all shuffle across the kitchen into the family room to peek out the windows into our driveway which is lit up by our outside light. There was a black Cadillac sitting there, but no one was inside from what we could see. Immediately the question was, where did the guys go? They weren't in their car, and they were no longer at the front door. Unfortunately, we figured out the answer when the handles on our back French doors started jiggling. They were actively trying to enter the back of our house enters into the kitchen. At this point, I just remember my mom frantically saying David to my dad as pure terror overwhelmed her. Then, two things happened. Adrenaline filled my body as I prepared my handgun, horrified at the very real possibility that I might have to shoot these men. Secondly, my dad finally grabbed the phone, called the police and calmly told them what was happening. Thankfully, after a minute of jiggling, they stopped at the back door and disappeared again, only to return to their knocking at the front. However, at this point, several minutes had gone by, and suddenly we saw the local police fly up in multiple cruisers with their lights on. As they whipped into our driveway and front yard, the two men bolted away, attempting to run the long way around the house, across the driveway. One of them disappeared out of our view, but the other one was intercepted by an officer yelling for him to get on the ground. He didn't, and he was immediately tased and fell on the ground. Some of the officers went around the house after the other guy, and one of them came to talk to my dad and I as we came out the front. They ended up finding the other man hiding in my sister's little playhouse in the backyard. It appears both of them were drunk and or high, 
as the one who hid had cocaine on him. While they were both arrested that night, we never did find out what they were charged for, or what happened to them. Needless to say, the whole experience wasn't fun. So random man at our door in the middle of the night? Let's not meet again. To you, the listener, thank you so much for listening in to my horror narration today about free creepy encounters. If you liked the video, leave a thumbs up. If you want to hear more horror narrations, leave a subscription. And maybe comment down below which one was your favorite story. Again, thank you so much for the support, for staying here and listening. And see you next time, when it's time to get scared together. <laughs>